happened in church. I requested that song because today we're going to be talking about peace. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray, I just praise you this morning, Lord. And I just ask you to, to remain in this place, Lord, and keep your spirit here this day, Lord, as the word goes forth. Let it fall into fertile ground, Lord, and produce a crop so great that your name will be made holy in our lives and in the lives of everyone who encounters us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um, our scripture, that was the song that we were going to do that song. Um, the scripture comes from 1 Peter, 1 Peter um, chapter 3, verses 8 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses, well, I might read 12 too, but uh, verses 8 through 11. And if you are able, please stand in reverence to the reading of God's word. And I'm coming from the New Living Translation, although I will be crossing other translations because I think it's very important uh, that we make it clear what God has um, required for us in this area. I know this is not the traditional scripture. I know usually we, we say, you know, this, like we just said, he'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. And we'll touch on that. But First Peter uh, chapter 3, verses 8 through 11 or 12, it says, Finally, all of you, this is New Living Translation, should be of one mind. Sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. For the scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. And I like the message version of, the, of, chapter, of um, verse 12, where it says, God looks on all this with approval, listening and responding well to what he's asked, but he turns his back on those who do evil things. And you may be seated. And so the main thing I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna go over the entire um, verses, but I want to talk about peace because I like how it says you have to search for peace. You have to seek peace. You have to pursue it. Some verses say you have to run after it. And then we have to work to maintain it by turning away from evil, from snubbing evil. You know, the, the desire to be able to say something back when somebody says something to you. You know, to be able to, to win the topic. You know, to, to not feel like you're a punk or you're weak. You know, nobody can just say anything they want to to me. But when we look at the scripture, it tells us something different. You know, it starts off and it says, finally, all of you should have the same mind. And what mind is that? It's the mind of Christ that we find in Philippians 2, where it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant. Amen? And it goes on and it talks about how... Even though he was God, he humbled himself, amen, to, to come down here to, to look after us, to, to die in our place, amen. He humbled himself when people were talking about him, as Pastor was bringing up today again, about how people insulted him, how people spit on him, how people stabbed him in the back, how people did him every kind of way, amen. We didn't hear him always popping off. I was having to have the last word, having to call everybody, amen. He didn't call all the disciples and start talking about somebody, amen. He handled that because he took it to God. And then so that when it says to us finally in, in uh, chapter in, uh, chapter one verse um, verses three and eight I mean chapter three verse eight it says Final, finally all of you should be of one mind it's talking about us having that same mind of Christ to be able to humble ourselves and to serve one another it says sympathize with each other and sympathy means you have pity over somebody and sorrow for their misfortune. Yeah. Amen. Another version says compassion. That means you sympathize with somebody's situation so much that you want to make it better. So when somebody's insulting us or when somebody's coming at us, sometimes we can see that's actually something going on inside of them. Amen. We're able to look at the other side of it, not just automatically feel defensive, automatically want to protect ourselves. But we have the mind of Christ, amen? We have the love that is going to be necessary in order to try to have a relationship and keep a relationship with one another, to be obedient to the word of God, to be brothers and sisters, amen? So we have compassion and we have sympathy 
when someone comes up and starts acting a fool or we see a lot of things going on on the earth today when we see children shooting people and then and people say well that's because they were bullied because other people mistreated them and then but they didn't have a feel like they had a recourse a god to go to and then to take all their cares and their concerns to and find another way of dealing with their issues to keep the peace amen and then it goes on to say love each other as brothers and sisters and so that's deeper than just like, hey, what's up, I love you. You know, um, I think Joyce Meyer or someone likes to say how people go, I love you with the love of the Lord, you know, and, and give people the little, you know, like the little church kiss or whatever. And God's requiring so much more. I mean, a lot of you all have been in church a long time, so you've heard all these definitions of love. And we know the agape love, which is, I mean, it's, it never changes. It's, it can never go away. It's going to be forever. You'll love a person no matter what they do, no matter what they say. We may have to put up boundaries. We may have to define our relationship with people. You know, you might not be able to hang around them all the time. You may not even be able to trust them with your purse, but you still love them. You love them. You want the best for them. You pray for them. Amen. You introduce them to God, amen, because you love them. And that's the kind of love that God requires that they're talking about in the scripture as brothers and sisters in Christ, because whether we acknowledge it or not, that's what we are. We are family, amen, the family of God. And so there are other types of love. Of course, we talk about the eros, which is the romantic, and we talk about the ludus, which is like a uncommitted, people playing around. And then there's the pragma, which is practical, where people say, I got a friend, you know, that I just hang around with. Actually, they said some marriages, Pastor, that they end up in pregnant. They said they start off romantic, they start off with even agape, but eventually they're just practical. Two people living in the same place. Wow. I don't know. And then there's something called philosophy, and that's self-love. And self-love can be healthy, or it can be unhealthy. Because self-love can be where you look at yourself with self-confidence in a way where we believe that everything's about us that everything we've done, we've accomplished it on our own. We leave out God, we don't, not only do we not put him first, but we don't give him glory for anything. Wow. And that's unhealthy self-love. But there's a healthy self-love, it's called self-esteem, where you esteem yourself not any higher, but not any lower than how God sees you, amen? amen. There should never be a suicidal Christian, amen, because you have such value to God, well, come on. amen? Wow. And he's, al he's always available to us, amen? He says we are wonderfully made, yeah. amen? We are beautiful in his sight. We have such value to him that he sent his son to die for us in the midst of our sin, amen? And so that's a healthy self-love when we see ourselves like God sees us, where nothing is impossible. Amen. Not even keeping peace amongst one another. Not even having peace inside of our own head when we say hateful things to ourselves about ourselves. Amen. That should never be so with a person who actually knows God, amen. amen? And that's what we should be striving to do is to know God. Amen. To make God rule in our lives. To understand he is my friend. Yeah. Amen. That there, he sticks closer than a brother. Mm -hmm. The scriptures are true. Amen. About God. Amen. Not, not just in the written word, but in my life. That's yeah. where we should know God. Amen. How many people here think they know God? They Amen. know you know God. You've had encounters with God. You know the spirit of the living God. He yeah. comes to your room, you know, your sick bed. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He was right there holding your hand. When you prayed to him, he heard you and he answered. Amen. And so that's a healthy self-love, to look at yourself the way that he looked at you on that day when he came into your room to your sick bed, when he answered your prayers, when he watches over your children, when he gave you the blessing, and when he gave us instructions on how to live our lives so that we can have the abundant life. That's the kind of love, we should, that's the way we should see ourselves. And when we see that kind of love for ourselves, we should take that out to other people, understanding that God loves them also. And, then, and so we should make every effort to have peace. And so that's love. It says to... Uh, be tender-hearted or compassionate. Okay, that means to have a kind, gentle, or sentimental nature. To be courteous and polite to one another. And remember, it doesn't matter about what the other person is saying or doing. I mean, God does not remove his requirements from us, his commandments, his biblical principles from us determining on the way someone else is behaving. Amen. Because the Bible really shows us that in the way that we're behaving, other people should be able to follow that example, particularly when we have the same spirit. There's one spirit. Amen. And when we lay things down, it's a word in this uh, scripture that's, that's called cultivate. I mean, in one version, it's talking about cultivating. And cultivating is like a farmer. You know, it's like putting it, it's, it's a scripture that says when you cultivate peace. It's like you put out seeds of peace. Amen. When you're a peaceful person, you put out the seeds of peace. Amen. And then 
It says what? Some seed or plant and some water, and, and mm -hmm. God will give the increase. Mm -hmm. And then so as we cultivate peace, there should be more peace. And then so we be tenderhearted and compassionate towards one another. And then if we have real love for somebody, most of the time, even when they're coming up, popping out, there's just a spirit. That, have you ever seen a person, no matter what you say to them, they just don't even get mad about it? And then you might have been in a mood that day. You know, you might even said something really nasty. And hopefully the Holy Spirit, you know, tells us to go back and make that right. But there's it's some people that just can't be shaken because they have a peace that surpasses understanding. And then that's a person that knows God. And then no matter what you say, they, they can still love you. They can still show love and compassion towards you. That's what the scripture is telling us we got to work to be able to do. We have a strong, strong desire to alleviate your suffering. What is the matter? You know, why was, was, ne was Nene popping off at me? Nene doesn't usually pop off. You know, why is you always so angry? What is going on? You know, they're talking about how some people use drugs and alcohol to alleviate that, that lack of inner peace. They just try to leave the building. You know, what is going on that you feel like that you have to use drugs to escape life? And then have that compassion and that concern and that tenderheartedness and that love towards somebody else instead of just going insult for insult. In 1 Peter um, 3 and 8, it says, keep a humble attitude. And we were reading about that in Philippians. You know, it says, esteem, you remember the scripture that says, esteem others more highly than ourselves, like Jesus did. Sometimes you might be the one that has to walk away. And then people always want to be the one that wins. You want to be the one who gets the last word, but sometimes you're going to have to be the one, or me, to walk away. Amen. Just humble ourselves and say, you know, it's just, I want the relationship more than I want to win the argument. Amen. And so then we go to 1 Peter 3 and 9, and he says, don't repay evil for evil. And we know there's so many scriptures saying that. Don't, you know, humility and gentleness, don't repay evil for evil, but repay uh, evil with good. And, and they talk about, you know, hot coals being put on someone's head when they, they mistreat you. Or in for, further on in 1 Peter, that says, it shows people later on down the road that they were wrong when they said bad things about us, when we're able to show that we're decent people. And then it says, don't repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. So I thought like, gosh, I know everybody knows what evil is, right? But maybe they don't. So evil is being profoundly immoral and malevolent. Evil is when we are wicked or depraved. Evil is the opposite of good, amen? And so if you revile someone, what's reviling? It, it's to criticize in an abusive or angrily insulting manner, amen? So that's like when somebody says something, you know, they didn't do something right, and instead of you going to show them what they need to do right, you go, that's for you stupid. You know, what's wrong with you? You'll never learn. So and so always causing problems. Okay, instead of just sticking to the, the, the subject, you know, and just going like, okay, let me show you how to do this right. Do you need some help? Or just ignoring it. Amen. Some people always got to have something to say. But the Bible is telling us we're not supposed to be repaying evil with evil or reviling for reviling. And if someone treats us that kind of way and they make us feel as though they're saying that we are stupid, we don't get to go like, leave how stupid. You know, it's trying to start arguments and fights. And so it says, don't retaliate. And I know that's hard. A lot of times it's very hard because some things come very naturally. Amen to a human person, you know, what they say past time ain't always been saved, you know, I say that. And, and then, you know, and all those things like that, but you're saved now, all right? Yeah. So the Bible says we don't get to retaliate. And that doesn't mean we lose our rights. I mean, if it's something that there's a right or a law that tells us what we're supposed to do about a situation, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about being petty. And then, so whenever someone's saying something or doing something, we do not always have to respond to it. And then, because our goal is what? Peace. Amen. <laughs> and so it says, don't, re don't, I know, I know this is hard, but it says, don't repay insult with insult. And honey, I am my grandmother's daughter. I tell you, don't insult me on the wrong day. You know, so this is for me too. I'm Bertrand's granddaughter. You can't out argue me. You can't not insult me because I've been thinking about everything about you since I met you. Okay. I saw it. Wow. You know, just because I didn't say nothing don't mean I didn't see it. But love covered us, didn't it? Amen. Amen. That's how all of us feel, ain't it? You see me? You look at me right now like a Terminator screen. <laughs> uh -huh. Let me mess up. 
Y'all already got out. I got you. Y'all said you don't get to do it. And then you still gotta love me. And then watch what you're saying. It said, instead, pay them back with a blessing. Oh, it's so hard at this sometimes. But that is what God has called us to do. So if she's meeting me, I go like, you know what, Nene? I hope you just have a good day on now. You know? It, what does it cost you? But you know what, son? You're like, Brandon, you know, you know all that. Mm, I don't know. Whatever. You know, you, I know. But she probably know, too. Hope, if she's a real Christian person, she already knows. You know that what she that she needs to get in and check. And then, so let's just obey the word of God. So a blessing is speaking God's favor and protection over somebody and trying to bring happiness into an obviously miserable person's life. Amen. Who's always insulting people. And then there's 1 Peter 3.10. It says, for the scriptures say, this is in Psalms, if you want to enjoy life, the New King James Version says, he who would love life and see many happy days, good days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and lips from speaking lies and deceit. And y'all been in Colossians, it said don't lie to each other. I know that. I taught a sermon on lying. I know isn't that. So we're not supposed to be lying. We're not supposed to be speaking evil. Not trying to find something wrong with people. Amen. Just because you don't like them. You know, it's, it, it, you know, some of these things I'm going to touch on here talk about how most of the time when people are doing that, it's because there's something wrong inside of ourselves. Amen. You don't like yourself. Amen. And that's why you're talking about me. Amen. And that's what, you know, if I got a bad day, and I'm taking it on you, it's the same thing. And then for me, it's like if I'm having a bad day, you just happen to cross me on that same day, and I start popping off, that's about me, that's not about you. Amen, and I need to get that correct, amen. So it says that you don't speak lies, you don't deceive people, and you don't, and you watch your mouth. And we know life and death is in the power of the tongue, amen. And most of the time we talk about life and death being in the power of the tongue. We were talking about this, uh, I think last week, most people talk about the bad part of the tongue, you know, the lies and the deceit and the uh, backbiting and the gossiping and these you know, horrible words, you know, you're so sick, are you gonna die and speak positive instead of negative? But we, you know, we very rarely talk about the life part of the tongue. And that's why it's telling us to speak a blessing. Yeah. Amen, because if we really are Christian people and we really have the Holy Spirit, then we speak for God. Amen, so when I say God bless you, a blessing is coming. Amen. 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 When I say you are getting healed, then I'm speaking by the Spirit. Amen. When I say be well soon, we are speaking by the Spirit because we represent God. We are his ambassadors here on earth. We do things like he would do them if he himself were here. And when we get to know God and we get in close enough relationship with God, we will understand our position and our authority Amen. in Christ. Amen. That the words we speak, they should manifest if it's the will of God. Amen. So we have to watch what we say to people regardless of what they're saying to us. Yeah. Then it says, search for peace, all right? Because it's talking about cultivating good. You know, and I wrote that down about preparing land for use. And then when we speak that word to somebody, then every time they see us after that, that's what they'll remember is that they saw, when I saw you, you were always saying nice things to me. You'll be amazed even though people look like they're not listening to you, and they are. And then some of the people, those grouchiest people, I had them come back to me and really say, you know that day when you said that thing to me, I remembered that. And then so speak that thing. Till that ground with the Holy Spirit. Till that ground with the word of God. And then you don't know whose heart's going to change because of it. Cultivate good. You have a hope and a belief that good is going to come out of everything that we do and say. Because we are Christian people. We are sent out by God. And then go out and make disciples, teaching them to obey the word of God. Amen. In Matthew. So we're, we have to believe that that's what we're doing. When we speak to people, we are teaching one another how to obey God. But we have to believe that. Amen. So we pursue peace and we seek peace, which is a fruit of the Spirit. Amen. So we're required to obtain it. Amen. Learn how to have peace with ourselves. Because of Jesus, we now have peace with God. Thank goodness. We're no longer his enemies. Peace with others. And then peace is also a, a part of the armor, which we had our big teaching on the armor of God. The choose child with the preparation of peace, which means we know the gospel, we stand on it, we believe it, we know it to be true, we can repeat it, and we expect a manifestation of it. Amen? Amen. So we work to maintain peace. And sometimes it will take work. Amen? Because not everybody's going to like you. Amen? Not everybody's going to want peace. But we, as people of God, are required to try to maintain peace. Wherever it's up to us, we are supposed to have peace with people. Amen. And then in 12 is when it tells us that's what God is wanting. He'll bless you because of it. Amen. 
Now, some people have spiritual bondage, what they call spiritual bondage. I mean, they don't, they don't have peace within themselves. They don't have peace with other people. I mean, but they, the, everything that I was studying says a Christian can't really ever be in what's called spiritual bondage. What we could do is give the devil a foothold. I mean, we can give ground to the devil because of habits that we don't break, things, the sins that we indulge in. And so that kind of way, you won't have peace if you have the Holy Spirit. And then it's going to bother us. It's going to, and it has to, at some point, our will has to match up with God's will in order to have peace. And peace has been made available to us through Jesus Christ. All we have to do is repent, go before the throne of grace, and get cleaned up and come on back. But sometimes it is very hard to break a habit. And then, so if you're in the habit of popping off, if you're in the habit of doing something that you know is not good for you, it's going to be very hard to break it off because we'll have a stronghold on us. And that's why they're saying we have to pursue peace. We have to want it more than anything. And then we have to work to maintain it which means we don't go off on these little things. We don't go off into drugs. Christians don't go off on drug, uh, drug abuse. We, Christians are not allowed to have habits. We have to break them off through the help of the Holy Spirit. We're not allowed to be insulting people. We know gossip is like murder. And then we have to know our words so that we don't end up with a stronghold on our life that blocks us from having peace. And then we know that's by taking control of our thoughts. Right when things come into our head, before they even come out of our mouth, before we take action on them, we pray, we remember the word, we remove ourselves, and then so that we can have peace. And then, why is it that some people don't have peace right now? It says because some people mistake peace for unconsciousness, and that's why I'm talking about drugs. Like some people only feel good when they're tired. Like if you're tired and you're sleepy, you say, "I feel good, I got peace." Okay. There are some people that say, like, hey, if I have a few drinks, nothing matters to me anymore. Some people say, if I take drugs, then things don't matter that much anymore because they feel an inner stillness and a quietness. The article that I read said, being half asleep or desensitized by drugs is not going to take your problem away. Amen. It's going to still be there when we wake up. Amen. Only God is going to be able to help us with our troubles. Only living life. Walking down the path we talked about last week and walking this thing out letting God deliver us is going to take away our problems. The turmoil is going to still be there. The answer is not drugs. The answer is not alcohol. The, drug, the answer is not illicit sex. The answer is Jesus. Amen. The turmoil is going to be there because peace is being aware, in an aware state of who you are and whose you are and, and actually living your life. It says some people, they don't have peace yet because they mistake peace for happiness. They feel like they can only be calm is when everything's going their way. But the peace that surpasses understanding, the peace of God, is there regardless of what our circumstances are. Amen? Right. So a Christian doesn't have to always have everything going their way to have peace. You can be in a war zone and have peace. Amen? You can just have lost everybody in your family and you can still have peace. Amen? That doesn't mean that we don't grieve. That doesn't mean that we don't hurt. That doesn't mean that we don't cry. But that just means that we know that that person is in a better place, that place that God has prepared for them, and that one day we hope to be there too. And so we rejoice, amen, that, a, that when a person passes out of this rough life, amen. So we know something greater. We don't have to have a thing called happiness all the time to be at peace because we trust God with our destiny, amen. And we know that everything's going to turn out in our favor. And these are this, this is a very mature set of, of goals, in my opinion, for a lot of people. It's like, what you talking about? I can't say nothing back. What you talking about? How can you stay calm with the Holy Spirit? And it's the Holy Spirit that will mature us. Some people keep looking too far ahead. Like, I can't be happy today because I keep finding problems. Okay? But right now, you don't have any problems. And that's called being aware of where you are right now. Okay? While you're sitting here right now, there's absolutely nothing negative happening, hopefully. And then, so right now, you don't have any problems. But some people are going like, I know tomorrow, you know, the dog's going to come in my yard. Or, I know tomorrow somebody's going to call me and ask me for something. Or I know tomorrow my kids are going to get in trouble. Well, that's twofold a problem because one is that tongue issue right there. I'm speaking that negative stuff is that though God's not in control and everything can't work out in the positive. But then that's also like, how do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Jesus said there's enough problems to, for today. Why are you even worrying about tomorrow? Amen. Tomorrow is in the hands of the Lord. Why don't you enjoy your life today? Amen. While you're sitting right give out some glory right now. Like, Amen. Like, like y'all just go say, praise God right now. Just smile on your face, jump up or something. Be happy that right in this moment, there are no problems in this place. Some people keep looking back. 
Amen. That's why they'll never have no peace. You know, but God has forgiven the Christian person. Amen. That's all in the past. I mean, we are a new creation in Christ. Did we mess up some stuff? Sure we did. Do we continue to mess up some stuff? Sure we do. But repentance is available. And the Holy Ghost is there. And God's love never stops. Amen. And so he knows us. He loves us just like we are. Forgive yourself. And then get up and just start all over again. You know, give it to God. I mean, he's going to deliver you. Some things you might be delivered immediately from. And some things it might take a while. But as long as we're in that process... Amen. And we can honestly say upon self-examination, Lord, I'm in your hands every day, day by day, Lord God. I know you're changing me and growing me, Lord God. I give you glory. I thank you. We're saying prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Amen. And make your request known to God. And then you get the peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding in Christ Jesus. Amen. That's what we do. We don't keep looking back, talking about what we used to be. We're looking forward to what we are. Right now, I'm happy how the way that I am because I know how I used to be. Amen. And I praise God for where I am today. And I look, if I look ahead, I look ahead in Jesus and say, things can only get better. Amen. 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 So I have peace about it. Stop replaying the past in your man. What could have been? Amen. Look forward to what's going to be. Amen. Yes, heaven. Okay. And then some people, they just just easily get distracted. I mean, they're always thinking here and there. Their man goes away from the present moment, looking at external external circumstances all the time. I know Donald Trump, you know, the president, and he's going to do this and that. I know the governor and this person's going to do this and that. Uh, somebody say, you are, when you're in a traffic jam and you get upset, why are you upset? It doesn't make the traffic move any faster, okay? You're in a car and you aren't moving, and that's it. That's what your issue is. Some people have a problem defining their issues. Amen. They make them bigger than what they are. Right. Don't let somebody else come up and even say anything to you. It's going to be all right. You don't want to hear it. Okay, that's a saying that we don't have peace within ourselves. We're not even seeking peace. We're not maintaining peace. Amen. And the lesson today is we're required to. Amen. So when we get in that place of discomfort, dissension, division, whatever takes us away from having peace of mind, we need to go back to the word and remember, no, God, Jesus is my peace. He's the Prince yeah. of Peace. Okay, the word is my peace. God is my peace. Yeah. It's going to be all right. We have to do self-talk and live in the moment. And then the last thing they said was a lot of people, they don't fully trust God. And I think that's the main one mm -hmm. on all of us because we, we're not going to be in any higher level than what we are right now. And then we go higher and then we're in that level. And then we go higher and we're going in that level. And, then, and so whatever level of trust that we have, it's usually based on our experience with, experiences with God. But if you were one of those people we talked about earlier who doesn't give God glory, who never gave God gratitude, who doesn't even know God to be a healer, know God to be a, a person who's lo the lover of your soul, the keeper of your soul, and then, then every time something happens, we try to say like, oh, you know, that's the thing that just happened, as though we don't have any help. And we know that God said he'll never leave us or forsake us. Yeah. We're never alone. Amen. God has all the power. Jesus has all power in his hands. And he said, all authority has been given to me, so you go out. Amen. So authority has been given to us over our situation. When we pray, when we thank God, when we praise, when we believe God. Amen. We got to grow in our trust. But it's, like, it's so sweet. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Call his name. Jesus. You know, how I trust him, how, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, but over faith, to trust him more. Amen. And that's what we have to do is learn to trust God in our circumstances. We renew our mind. We change the way that we think, the way that we look at it. We take our thoughts captive. Amen. We look for the fruit of the spirit. We have peace, like the Bible requires. And we have peace with one another. We have the peace <coughs> of mind. And then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. You know, the Bible tells us God is our peace. Yeah. So if we have God living on the inside of us, we should be able to have peace, but we have to draw closer to him. And then we have to make him a priority in our lives. He gives us clear instructions how to draw near to him in Psalm 24, 3 through 4. It says, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear about a false god. But scripture makes it clear that we can't earn it. We have to draw near to God on our own because Jesus already promised us that he left us with peace. Amen. So if you say, I just never have any peace. I'm always unhappy. I'm always restless. I'm always worried. Then something's wrong in our thought life. Something's wrong in our prayer life. Something's wrong in our relationship with God. 
Amen. And so that, that's how we have to pursue peace and the peace that surpasses our understanding. And when Jesus came, people thought that he was going to come and make war. Remember that? He, you know, like a lot of times when we're not having peace with people, what, is that? what do kids say? I'm going to get my daddy. I'm going to get my mama. I'm going to get my big brother. You know, because we want somebody to come and give us peace right there in the moment. But Jesus taught us that most peace is going to be inside of our head, Elder Joe loves that. Okay, it's going to be inside of our minds, the way that we think about things and the way that we see things. That's how we're going to have peace, is to look at it the way that God looks at it and follow his instructions, and then it's going to work out. Amen? He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I don't give you peace the way the world gives it. So do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. So he already gave us instructions. It's not the absence of trouble. It's the presence of the Lord. And so you can tell when somebody's got the Lord deeply within them because they don't let too many things shake them. And then sometimes we say, well, people just don't like me. It's not anything that I'm doing. Sometimes people don't like me. Well, I was looking at this pastor, and he said, well, try to understand them. You know, it could be the thing that they hate about themselves or what they hate about you is what they secretly, secretly admire about you. So people can be jealous. Amen. They're just jealous. And so our response is not to go like, you just jealous. You know, our response is to go like, they, they might be jealous. But what I have to do is show myself friendly. Amen. It's it's up to me. I'm going to try to keep the peace with the person. I don't need to rub it in. It tells us, this guy says, you need to be kind to them. Because the hardest, most unkind person most of the time has something going on inside of them. And so when we show them kindness, it's like the Bible says, it's like putting hot coals over their head, that when they think about how good you are to them and how evil they have been to you, if they are Christian, amen, that should prick their consciences, amen, to say, like, this is inappropriate, this is unacceptable, amen, you don't repay kindness with evil, amen, so I would believe that the Holy Spirit would be, really be messing with a person, and it's a Christian person who repaid kindness with evil, and then, of course, it says to pray for them. Another uh, pastor that I was looking at, he said, one of the problems that we have that we don't have peace within ourselves and peace with other people is that we have unforgiveness. Amen. So that when it just keeps going and going and going. That's how we have wars and things. People don't get over stuff. People don't get past stuff. We might say that we got past it, but we didn't. Amen. Sometimes we even trump things up in our minds and made them bigger than what they were so that we can keep on having a grudge. How many people here hold grudges? I, I used to do... I used to lead women's ministry, and people were honest that they held grudges. I mean, I don't hold grudges. I forget. I got too much stuff in my head. I can't hold it. But it's, it's like, you know, some people hold gr grudges. You know, they remember what you did 25 years ago, even if they made it up. I mean, I'm like, dang, I didn't even, I had a lady mad at me. I never did know what she was mad at me about. I didn't even never talk to her. How can somebody get mad at you that you don't even talk to? So that just shows you how people build stuff up in their head. And I would even go to her and say, you know, have I done something? Because the Bible tells us to go to the person, right? If you feel like there's an issue between you and someone, to be able to make the peace, go tell them what's bugging you. Yeah. As Christians, we need to be more open-minded to receiving, you know, a little critique. You know, you can't be rude, you can't be nasty, you can't be insulting, but you should, we should be able to say, like, you know, when you were talking to me, you were talking a little too loud, or the way that you said that, you know, I, I took it this kind of way. And the other person should be able to say, oh, using that sympathy or that compassion or that concern that we were talking about earlier, to be able to receive it. Not to agree with it necessarily, but so that people will feel safe to go to one another and clear the air. Don't y'all want people to have relationships in the air to be able to, to be cleared? Don't you want to be able to go to someone and say, you know, I have a problem. And for them to be able to receive it without insult for insult, you know, retaliation, being afraid, I ain't saying nothing to her, because if I try to say something to her, she's going to get all mad, and next thing you know, it shouldn't be like that amongst Christians. We should be able to talk to one another. Amen? Because what's going to happen is you're going to hold grudges. You're going to start hating one another. You're not going to like one another, even if you made it up. Even if they made it up. I ain't going to say you did. Even if they made it up. You go like, I ain't do nothing. You're just jealous. But, you know, whatever. Okay? They should be able to come to us and talk to us. Amen? And we should be forgiving. Even if we see that they're just jealous or petty or whatever's going on, we need to learn how to forgive people so we don't keep these grievances and things going. They were saying that sometimes you even have a valid cause to complain about something that has happened or something that someone has done. But just like Jesus, he humbled himself. 
Amen. And made himself like a servant. He was God and he humbled himself. Amen. He dealt with us yet while we were sinners. He didn't even have to say nothing to us. When the Pharisees was running up in his face trying to run it, he could have just poofed and got rid of them. Amen. God did it in the Old Testament. Got, got rid of people in a minute. But he did it. He tried to talk to them and then he just mattered his business and went on about what he was trying to do. Living his life. Amen. Sometimes we get too caught up in all this mess and it's just the enemy. That's all it is. It's just the devil. Amen. Somebody let the devil use them. You know how they go? Uh, uh, Deacon Joe, they say, let God use you. Amen. But some people are going like, let the devil use you. Amen. Because the devil's using them. Amen. They're having a real day. What the heck are you talking about? It's evil. What are you talking about? What are y'all going to be speaking of evil? You evil. You wicked. What are you doing? You know? But I forgive you. Anyway, so it could be a challenge because sometimes you do have a legitimate grievance against somebody. Try to talk it out. Try to work it out. Pray it out. Whatever you do to try to keep peace. Amen. Forgive them freely, though. It talks about sometimes you have to uh, that people that you have to be long suffering with people. You know that sometimes people just want to keep stuff going, and you have to be long suffering with them. You can't just uh, expect that people will change overnight. Amen. You have to talk it out. Once we once we forgive them already, regardless of whatever they say or do. After we've gone to our brothers, they have out against us, that we have out against them, and it might not still work. Then we just go to the Lord with it, and we just pray about it, and then we just wait with the expectation that things are going to change. Amen. Yeah. Even if that person doesn't change, it'll change us. Yeah. Amen. Because it won't matter so much. Because we'll be like Jesus. We'll go ahead and be living our own lives. Amen. And we'll have peace. We'll have peace in ourselves. And to us, there's peace. Because I don't have no beef with you. Amen. I'm not thinking about you on that kind of a level anymore. I'm not thinking about what you said on that kind of level anymore. That's all in the hands of God now, and God's got you. It's like he's got me. Amen. So it says don't overthink things all the time. You ever see people like you can just say good morning and they find something else in it. Amen. You see the way she said good morning. I'm like, oh my goodness. And y'all was talking about me last week because I didn't say good morning. Amen. <laughs> now I said good morning and y'all said I said it in some type of way. Amen. So what, what is it that you're wanting? That's inside that person. Stop overthinking it. I just said good morning. I meant good morning. All right. I hope you have a good morning. Do you want me to say it that way? I don't know. Buenos dias. I really don't know what you want me to say. Amen. You know, I mean, I say it that way if you want me to say it that way just to keep the peace. Stop overthinking things. Amen. Spend some time with your family. Go have some fun. And this, you can, I don't know if y'all like me. Like I said, I can't keep a bunch of stuff in my head. I really can't because I have so many things going on and I'm a thinking type of person. So you can do something and I'll probably forget what you do. But I, I'll go and start doing something else. Uh, bro, Tom knows if you get on the phone with me and you start talking nonsense, excuse me, I, I know it's important to you. Don't, don't take, don't take offense. But you know, I go like, you know what? I got to go do something else. That's exactly what I will tell you. I have to go do something else. I won't lie to you because I am gonna go do something else. I'm gonna get off this phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go do something else. And then, so sometimes it's what you gotta do. And then you need to go find something else to do so you can have peace. And then, because I'm not listening to that. I already got enough to worry about, you know, and I love you, and I pray for you, and I'm for you, and all that stuff, but when you start bringing out some extra, it's like my, my hands grip pop or something, I don't know, it's like, God, it's too much, you know, I'm not supposed to remember that, you know, I'm supposed to remember what, you, what you're supposed to remember, and what I'm supposed to remember, no, I can't do it all, amen, so I think I'm going to find something else to do so I can have some peace, amen, amen. Make sure you free up some time. Some people's days are so full, they never have no peace. You know, they get up. I had a day like that the other day. I looked up and it was time to come to Bible study, and I was late. I was like, wow, how did I even do that? I was just busy all day long. And you'll get overwhelmed. You really will. You know, people need some time to meditate. We were talking about, like, having a solitary place or an altar or somewhere. You could just find peace in your house. Just go have your place. Tell your family, I'm going to my place. I'm going to my prayer room some people have. I'm going in my prayer closet. I'm going in my bedroom. I'm going before the fireplace. Something. Amen. I'm going to get before my knees. And I, it's just going to be me and God. Now, I go to the forest. Amen. Because I kill two birds with one stone because I got a hike. I can find this way. But I also pray to God while I'm out there. Amen. And it's me and him. And no people. I was talking about how uh, Bruce Almighty, I don't know how many people saw that, but in Bruce Almighty, where he is uh, trying to believe and he can take the place of God. And, and these prayers are falling down. You know, he's trying to, that's how most of us probably feel. 
And then like when Jesus stood in front of the people and he could feel their needs and he was moved with compassion, most leaders feel like that. Pretty much all Christians should probably feel like that. And so you feel the prayers and the concerns of the people when you're a leader. I, I've had people who are even supervisors probably feel kind of like that and stuff. People who work with people, you just, you just feel overwhelmed sometimes. I call it people fatigue. I, you know, with Jesus, at one chapter where he had, had healed Jairus' daughter and the woman with the issue of blood and all these things were going on. And what did he do next? He went off to a solitary place. He went off to himself. He tried to because they followed him. But he went off to a solitary place to take some time off. That's what I do. I believe that all of us need to do that. Just to get our peace back, amen, with just us and God instead of having all this, these concerns and issues and people problems going on in our head so that we can maintain our peace. Amen. And again, it talks about being yeah, long suffering and giving the free time. It says, don't exaggerate the situation. I keep coming back to that one. Let go of the past. Being grateful. Being grateful will give you peace. It's like, okay, it might not be what you want it to be, but at least it could be worse. And so we go, like, I have peace about it because it could have been a worse outcome than what I got. And so I'm grateful to God. And be realistic that things are not going to work your way every single time. Stop trying to control everybody and everything. I mean, I think that is a big deal. I mean, people are constantly trying to tell us how we're supposed to think, how we're supposed to feel, what we're supposed to do, and sometimes that is right and sometimes it's not. But when people listen to that and not listen to the Holy Spirit and don't listen to God, they get in trouble. I think it was Pastor Helen or maybe Pastor, it was Pastor Dukes last night talking about how people always want somebody else to go with them. Amen. But a lot of people are not meant to go with us on our journey. So when God tells us something, then we always ask in other people's opinions and things like that. And so we get off track. And we're not going to have peace when we're off track. Even though the road may seem rough and the going gets tough, you know, and the hills are hard to climb. I, you can tell I'm in praise team. But it's like, you know, the hills are hard to climb. I decided, I started out a long time ago and I made up in my mind what? I decided to follow Jesus. Okay, so it's like you have to make a decision on who you're following that you're going to be double-minded and torn and you're not going to have peace. When you try to control every little situation and every person, they're, they're not going to understand your journey because it's not theirs. Amen. And so we, get, we still should have peace about that, that we might have to leave some people behind. You know, and that's a hurtful thing to go, like, can't you just, sometimes I have said to people, I don't know about y'all, I said, can't you just please go with me? You know, can't you just stop what it is that you're doing that's making a division between us? Can't you just come on with me, you know, if they are not meant to come with us. At the end of the day, it's always going to just be you and I. You know, when you die, you're going to die by yourself with Jesus standing right there. You know, it's not going to be the person sitting next to you. You know, y'all might even go at the same time, but the experience is with you and God. Amen. So you might as well get used to it right now. Amen. Make that relationship between ourselves and God. It says moderate your convictions. Okay. What they say, you never talk about what politics and religion. Of course, we're required to talk about God. So some people are going to be offended. I and mean, then you see people on social media, all the time they're arguing. They're talking about, y'all live a fantasy. There is no God. And people just go berserk and start screaming and hollering, you're going to hell and all this stuff like that. But the scripture we read said you don't repay insult with insult. That you bless and you don't curse. Amen. So for us, we just stick to what the word of God says. Amen. And we pray for these people who don't even know God. We moderate our convictions. We don't slam the Bible over anybody's head. We don't change the word, but we are all things to all people. We learn how to present our message. Amen. And we understand the promptings of the Holy Spirit as to what he would have us say and do and leave it at that. Not add nor taking away a bunch of stuff. Being tolerant, being peaceful, and being forgiving. Forgiving. Amen. To keep peace. And so what I wanted to do you know, after we talked about, they were talking about laying your burdens down and making sure that you have inner peace, beginning with yourself and your relationship with God, knowing that God loves us, God gives us forgiveness, God is the blesser. I wanted everybody to stand, because I always end with a declaration, right? I know y'all gonna think this is probably funny, but I want you to turn to your neighbor, and some people hate that, and I want you to put up the peace sign. Amen. Say, peace, my brother. So peace, peace, my, my brother. brother. Not deuces. Don't nobody say deuces. It's peace. Amen. And that's all I wanted to say. Amen. I wish you the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And now we're moving into the invitation. Is there anyone here today?
that doesn't know God, Jesus Christ, in the pardoning of your sins. I think everybody in here has confessed Christ. But if today, you say, I just don't have peace. And then my mind is tormented. I have so many concerns. I mean, I got a son right now that's going for a sentencing hearing on Tuesday. And he did something really stupid, so we need their prayers. He didn't, nobody got hurt. He just did something stupid. But they're talking about sending my child to prison, but I got peace. You know, because I know a guy that freed Peter from prison. He can free my son from prison. I know a guy who is a healer. He can heal my son's mind. And then change his ways. My son knows God. And so I have peace about that. But there are some other things, you know, once you get peace about one thing, other things come. I got another child. Some of y'all might have a child. You might have, have death in your family and you just grieve. It's so hard. You know, and you go like, I know that there's a Lord. I know there's a God, but God, my heart is so heavy, Lord. God, I need someone to pray for me today, Lord God. You know, you say, like, like the old James Cleveland song, you know, say I'm, you're out of work and all your bills are due and you don't have peace about it. You're worrying if your lights are going to get turned off. You're worrying where you're going to live. You can come up to somebody and pray with you. If you don't have peace about your relationship or your marriage, you know, God is in between married people. It's a threefold cord. But if you just like the blessing spoken over your relationship or your marriage, come on forward. So if you need prayer for any reason so that you can have peace, then come forward. You don't have to be bound. You don't have to have strongholds on you. You don't have to leave this place the same way that you came in. People care about you. We care about one another, don't we? Yes, we do. We pray for one another, don't we? So you don't have any reason to be bound. You don't have any reason to leave and feel like you're all alone. If anybody in here has fallen out of the ark of safety, you know, a Christian is always able to come back. The Holy Spirit should not allow any Christian not to fall into a state of repentance. But if there's anybody here today who says, I just want to make it public. I want to let people know that I want to be restored back to Christ. I want to come back before the people like I did from the very beginning. And I want to be restored to this body of believers uh, before the Lord. The altar is available for you. If there's anything, any reason, like baptism, if you said I've already confessed Christ, but I never made the step of baptism, some young people in here. And then you can come forward. If you don't want to come forward now, then you can come forward afterwards. People will be available, always available to you to pray with you, to pray for you. And I wanted to say something about the laying on of hands. I think some people have a misperception. <coughs> the laying on of hands is not any power that comes from me or the pastor. It's from God to come in line with you in agreement with you for the power of God and your faith to manifest a, a, an outcome. So it's not like if we lay our hands on people, poof, you're healed because that's, we have some magical power. We're standing in agreement with you and your faith because when people got healed, Jesus didn't say, I healed you. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Amen. So when God touched people, he said he took the person's faith. Well, let's get it straight. We're going to have healing ministry, and I will be laying on hands, and I will be putting on all them. So will anybody else who helps in that ministry? But it will be your faith that will make you whole. What you believe about God. Amen. So we will pray and pray and pray for you so that you can have a peace that surpasses all understanding in Christ Jesus. Amen. So if we don't have anybody who wants to come forth today, then let's just give God glory. Amen. For the peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen.